Five M Stone, a load of Blade Sheon, a load of Cobra R Clone. I don't. Who who even knows what that one is? Hello, Queenie. Hello, T Chair. Dialm. I wish I wish I could pronounce your names. It's just get it's going downhill. We're gonna start in just about a minute, a minute or less, is what I'm saying right now. You will soon be on a trivia journey with me. Uh, I hope that this is a highlight of your day each day. I hope it gives you a little break from all the stuff going on everywhere else, including inside your own home. Happy to provide that for you. We're happy to be here. Jennifer, yes. It's a highlight for my day, for sure. And a highlight for your day as well. We are on two dining room chairs, sitting and looking at multiple screens to bring you this game. That's how we're doing it right now. We are, we are homebrew trivia for you live to almost 20,000 people. We're going to get started here in just about 10 seconds. Somebody wants Heart of Dixie trivia. That is a deep cut. I remember watching the pilot to that. Okay, here we go. We are about to begin with Wednesday's Swag Bucks Live. Yes, folks, you have made it to the middle of yet another week. It is Wednesday. Quick reminder, hump day, and you are playing Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. I'm your producer, Hal, the voice who presents the choice. And if you choose well today, you're going to enjoy some of our grand prize. There it is. Ooh, ah, $1,000. And if you can correctly answer all 10 of my multiple choice general trivia questions, you'll win your share of it. But we've got more than a grand prize for you. In this game, you will earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. If you don't stick around until after the game to claim them, you won't get to keep them. But those of you who win the game will get your bonuses automatically. So to recap, stay till the end of the game. Claim all the bonus SB you earn so you can get them added to your account. But if you win, you're going to have it added automatically. We are almost at 20,000 people in this game. I can feel it. I can taste it. I can smell it. I can almost reach out and touch it. There it is. 20,000 plus players. You want a game? Oh, I'll give you a game. I'm going to clear the comments off your screen, too, because who needs that noise? It's time for the warm-up question. Here is question number one. Traditionally, what color does the bride wear at a wedding? Is it mauve, white, or yellow? What color? Dang, you can wear any color you want. I'm not judging. This tradition comes from Queen Victoria. The color is meant to symbolize purity and virtue in Western cultures, which is why brides wear white. White is the answer. Almost 100% of you getting that right. No surprise. Uh, in China, they wear red because that is an auspicious color. So different places around the world wear different colors. But traditionally, most of the Western world, we are wearing white. That is the big thing. My wife wore a beautiful white dress on, uh, on our wedding day. And I remember seeing her at the top of her parents' stairs. That was the first time I saw the dress. And I cried because she is beautiful inside and out. Let's move on now. We had some people coming in. Some of the stragglers, you are here with us. Great to have you. Welcome. We're about to go into question two. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Question number two. Louis XIV was known by what nickname? The Sun King, Burger King, or Laskin King Crab? Louis XIV, what was his nickname? He was a prominent enough ruler to have his own song on the Beatles' final studio album, Abbey Road. Here comes the Sun King. 95% of you getting that one right. Little Beatles for you on a Wednesday evening slash afternoon, depending on where you are. Only 5% of you out, but I already see almost half of those people, over half of those people now, have rejoined. Yes, the Burger King, uh, he's that guy with the plastic head who sells you hamburgers and Alaskan King Crab. I mean, we've all had seafood before. You know what that is. I don't have to tell you. But I do have to tell you that our next question, question number three, is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What country singer got her start by winning American Idol? Was it Dolly Parton, Molly, Miley Cyrus, or Carrie Underwood? Or was it Molly Cyrus? Maybe either one. For every Kelly Clarkson story, there are several more winners who didn't quite hit those same heights. But the correct answer to this question did. Season 4 winner, Carrie Underwood. 
became a huge star. 95% of you once again getting that right. Well done. Do you remember this season? Were you watching American Idol live? I remember that first season like the back of my hand. Uh, I was so excited to watch it. Kelly Clarkson was amazing. Carrie Underwood came later. Fantasia Barino was a winner. Uh, uh, Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson did not win. I think she finished sixth her season. Crazy. Almost the list of people who did not win almost uh, supersedes the people who did. But we are going to move on right now to let you win if you can get a bonus for answering question number four correctly. Here it is. Hugh Grant, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Catherine Zeta-Jones were all mentioned as candidates to assume what role? The President of the United States, Doctor Who, or Sherlock Holmes? All three actors were bandied about for what role? Now, while they all may have been fans of this show, none of them stepped into the TARDIS as a regeneration of everyone's favorite Time Lord, the Doctor. Doctor Who is the answer. 54% of you got that right. Of course, Jathan Zeta-Jones, not the first female Doctor. That honor goes to Jodie Whittaker, who is currently filling out the suit. I mean, her own outfit. They all have their own outfit. I get it. I know. I know the answer. I see that almost everybody who is out, two-thirds of you at least, have rejoined that is what I like to see. You get back up on that horse. You don't get discouraged when you get knocked down. You keep going. And even if you got out, you stick around no matter what because we have bonus SB for you. Yes, we do. In fact, I have one bonus SB coming your way right now if you can correctly answer question number five. Here it is. Which song was Buddy Holly's only number one hit in the U.S.? Peggy Sue, That'll Be the Day, or Not Fade Away? He only had one number one hit in the U.S. Which song was it? Now, Buddy Holly had a short career, but it was impactful. He created new methods for recording and released several memorable songs, but his lone number one hit in the U.S. was Whoa, that'll be the day. 37% of you getting that one right. Another hard one. We had almost 60% of you go for Peggy Sue, which I get it. It might be his most famous song, but it was not a number one hit. In the U.S., the only one to have that honor was That'll Be The Day. He had a couple of day songs. He had that day. He had every day. A lot of day. He was obsessed with calendars. I, I swear, that Buddy Holly. And yet, look at you coming back into the game. Almost half of the people who got out on that are back in. That means we have over 9,000 people barreling towards the $1,000 grand prize, all trying to get their share. Everybody else, the 20,000 plus in this game, Looking for bonus, SB. And guess what? You don't have to look far because I got one for you right now in question number six. Here it is. What theory uses tectonic plates to explain how Pangaea broke into different continents? Is it Lincoln Continental, Continental Drift, or Continental Boom? A little science for you. Now, we can't be 100% sure how the supercontinent of Pangaea ended, but this is the most widely accepted scientific theory. The shifting Earth and continental drift. Yes, they drifted apart. It happens to all of us sometimes. 96% of you did not drift away from that question. You got it right. Only 3.4, only 349 of you, that's 3.8%, for those of you who are still in the science mind, got out on that. That is what I like to see. Very low numbers. And I think we're ready now to move into question number seven. How about that? Let's see what kind of numbers you rack up here because it is worth one bonus SB no matter what, if you get it right. Here it is. Reigning NBA MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo goes by what nickname? Air Jordan, Black Mamba, or the Greek Freak? What is his nickname? Even if you don't watch basketball, do you see his cellular phone commercials? He's out there. Now his last name translates to the king from across the seas. That is true, and it fits. This European native has been an unstoppable force that everybody calls the Greek Freak. That is his nickname. He's from Greece. He's the Greek Freak. Black Mamba, that was Kobe Bryant. 20% of you picking that. 75% of you overall getting that one right. Well done. And Air Jordan, of course, that's Michael Jordan. He, he, it was in his name. There it is. Uh, I, I love to see this. I love to see 75% of you getting a question like this. This late in the game, question seven, getting that one right. That is what I like to see. Over 7,000 people in grand prize contention. And so let's move on right now into question number eight. It is worth a bonus SB to everybody playing, no matter what, just get it right. Here it is. Lake Superior State University issues hunting licenses for what mythical creature? Is it Unicorn, Bigfoot, or Abominable Snowman? You can get a 
license to hunt which of these mythical creatures from this university. Bill Rabe was a PR guy who went to work for the university in 1971 and figured out a way to get everyone's attention on the school. Issue hunting licenses for unicorns. That is what they issue hunting licenses for. 45% of you got that right. Did you go to Lake Superior State University? Well done. That is really good. 49% of you went with Bigfoot. I don't blame you. Plenty of Bigfoot hunters. Plenty of uh, just big people who just want to have a Bigfoot encounter. They're, they're going on tours. They're doing all this. That would seem like a logical answer, but the hunting licenses are for unicorns. And apparently it worked, if we're still talking about it now, because that was, what, 40, 49 years ago? And we're still talking about it. Good job, Bill Rabe. All right, we've had our rejoiners come back in. It's getting thin. The herd is getting thin. 3,936 people competing for the grand prize now. Let's move into our second to last question, worth one bonus SB to everyone playing along. Question number nine. Which of these brand names is synonymous with tissues? Is it Q-Tip, Starbucks, or Kleenex? When you think of tissues, which of these brand names springs to mind? Brands kill to have this kind of market presence, where you don't even have to say the name of the thing. You say their name. Like when you ask somebody if they have any Kleenex, Kleenex is the answer. 3,902 of you have made it this far. Guess what? You're ready for our final question. And I hope you had fun. I hope all of you had fun. 20,000 plus of you. We're just having fun on a Wednesday. And here's how to make it more fun. Invite your friends and family to join you. Share your share share about this game on social media. Send emails. Send texts. Include your share link from this game and you will get a, a, a free rejoin if they sign up. Not only that, but whatever they do on Swagbucks, you're going to earn 10% of that. So you're making SB no matter what. And you're getting a free rejoin that you can use in this game like the thousands of people who rejoin for free. I mean, you can't beat that deal. Hey, everybody, uh, in case you weren't aware, Passover started at sundown this evening if you're on the East Coast. And Easter is on the way this Sunday. So tomorrow I'll be quizzing your knowledge about both holidays at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I will have a $1,000 grand prize. So join me for a little holiday fun See how well you know both of these holidays. Now, before we get to Q10, get the best restaurants in your city to deliver food right to your door by trying out Caviar through Swagbucks.com. You get high-quality restaurant meals delivered right to you, and when you sign up and make your first order, you will get 750 SB. You don't have to settle when you're ordering meals. Get the very best with Caviar. You have to be a U.S. player to qualify. That is how we're getting our restaurant meals now, where either you have to pick it up or have it delivered. Why not turn a special occasion that you're celebrating at home and make it a little fancier with caviar? Get the best restaurants in your city to deliver the best food right to you. That, my friends, is a party. Okay, here we are. 3,908 people vying for a piece of the $1,000 grand prize. 20,000 plus playing along, staying strong. They want the bonus SB in this question, so let's get to it. Our final question, question number 10. The Middle Eastern land called the Fertile Crescent is also known by what nickname? The Cradle of Civilization, the Hand That Rocks the Cradle, or Moontown? What is that area known as? That region's unique ability to sustain life made it the birthplace of a number of early societies and religions, earning it the nickname the Cradle of Civilization. That is the answer. 3,772 of you got that one right. Congratulations. You are splitting our grand prize. Look at all these people. We got Hero H, 1905. You are my hero today. We got Lodgy Bear. We got Harsh 29. I hope that wasn't too harsh for you. I hope you did well. Hope you had fun. Tasha Gray. The Kid. The Kid, you're becoming... The adult, because you won that game, and David Leto are just a few of the winners who are each taking home 27 SB in addition to the bonus SB that they earned along the way. And what do you do with those SB? Everybody out there, repeat after me. You redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Thanks for playing along with us today, everyone. Don't forget that tomorrow we've got a holiday quiz for you. This is Swagbucks Live. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, everyone.